Do you like French cleats? We're here at 10 Ideas to Inspire You. Let's begin. I recently picked up some of these 4 inch Bessie clamps and they're turning out to be my go-to choice for most of my smaller projects. The only thing is its storage is a little bit more difficult and I don't want to just pile them up on my workbench and leave them there. Now since these clamps are a lot shorter and a good bit narrower at the top here, they didn't fit real well in my standard holder, but I did notice that they're almost balanced right in the center, which gave me an idea. And that's when I came up with this design. It's basically an elongated oval with a hole in the middle. Let's take a closer look. Now this holder is about five and a half inches wide and I have a three inch hole in the middle. I just use a hole saw to cut that out. Now the total height is just a little bit taller than the clamps so they don't hit anything in the bottom. But the great thing is, is the clamps fit in and out real easily. And you can swing them around to any side that you want just in case you're a little OCD and you have to have it even on both sides. Trust me, I understand. Now these clamps are lightweight, but I decided to add a 45 degree angle support on both sides just for some added support because we are in a workshop and well, it might get used and abused. And just in case you don't have any four inch clamps, my wife reminded me, hey, this could be a great cup holder. Here recently, I purchased some of these cleaning brushes. They fit right in your drill and they work great at trying to get up some of those hard to remove dirty spots. The only downside is these, well, with the shape and the size can be sometimes a little hard to store. I mean, I guess you could just throw these into a drawer and then a little bit later you've lost them because everything else has been shoved in that drawer and you've, well, forgot they're in there. Hey honey, have you seen my brushes? And it was about that time that a friend named Scott inspired me to make a French cleat holder for these. And this is what I came up with. Now my brushes came in a kit of three, so I took a one by six and I positioned some cutoffs from a two by four that I drilled a hole and cut a 45 degree angle on. This allows me to put all three brushes into position and they don't interfere with the ones above and below each other. So I can take them out and put them in really quickly. Now on the side over here, mine came with a little extension bar. And so I took another piece of two by four and kind of rounded off the edges here to make it a little more appealing to the eyes. And it's a great way to store your brushes. In a previous video, I made this holder. It was for my speed squares and for my combination squares. And it worked well for a short while. But I used solid wood when I was making this and I forgot to take in consideration that over time with heat and moisture and humidity, that it's going to warp and change a little bit. I have a couple of these boards that are sitting a lot lower or higher than when I first made it. And actually I have one of these slots that has pinched together and makes it hard to put anything in anyway. So it was time to redesign. Now on this new holder, I decided to use just plywood because it's less likely to warp and it still has a lot of strength. Now, if you notice, I have two different levels here. This side over here is for the speed squares. And that's because it's almost flush at the top anyway, so I didn't have much sticking above it. But over here is for the combination squares because I still wanted them to be about level with the top so it doesn't interfere with other holders. Now when it comes to the spacing of each of these, I decided to go a little bit wider than the actual tool. So I took a craft stick, which is probably about a 16th to an eighth of an inch thick, and I put that in there as well so that I could space them out. And that way, just in case these decided to warp just a little bit, hopefully they'll still be usable. Now I did leave one extra slot here because there's always a chance I might pick up some extra tools and I didn't want to have to build anything else. But that right there is a great way to store some of your squares. A few years back, these plastic holders with these little plastic trays were real popular, but they're not so popular anymore because we have a lot more options. But here recently, I saw one of these that was enclosed in a box, and if you add a French cleat to the back, it gives you a lot more options. Now, I just used some scrap plywood to go around this. It happens to be three quarters of an inch thick. You don't have to have it that thick, but it'd probably at least a half inch. Now by doing this, it gives you a shelf on the top and it gives you the ability to add hooks and hangers to the sides as well as to the bottom. And now that it's encased in wood, it's nice and sturdy. You don't have to worry about it getting banged around and getting broken. Now when I was putting this together, I actually sprayed this entire thing in an acrylic matte finish. I thought it was gonna make the grain stand out a little bit, but it actually made it look almost like a whitewash finish. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Do you prefer the whitewash or the wood grain? Now this next one was also inspired by my friend Scott. Now this is a file holder and it's pretty simplistic, but it's a little bit different than the others I have seen. 
Now first off, on other file holders I've seen, they usually have the file facing straight out, nice and flat. But that takes up a lot of room. So I've actually turned these 90 degrees and that allows me to have a little bit more compact and a little bit less space. I've also designed each of these slots to match the shape of the file. So it's really easy to keep it all organized and you don't have to worry about people putting other random stuff in your slots. I also added a footer at the bottom so that way it can be self-standing and you can move this around wherever you need it. And there's a great way to store some of your files. A while back, I happened to have seen a shelf that was in a V shape, and that got me thinking, that's a great idea for a workshop, because it doesn't matter if you have something that's round, hexagon, square, triangle, whatever, it'll fit nicely in that V shape, and you don't have to worry about it rolling off. Now this is a very simple design. This is just a furring strip that I've cut at a 45 degree angle that makes a nice 90 degrees and just line everything else up on a nice backing board. And very simple, very easy. Now a great necessity you need for your workshop is a fan. Now this happens to be a job site fan. It's a little more heavy duty than some of them, but you sometimes need that Ah, nice, refreshing breeze, especially on summer days. Like today here, it's supposed to be somewhere between 95 and 100 degrees. Whew, that is a hot one here. So, with this setup, it's real simple. I'm using and incorporating the standard holes that are currently in the bottom. So, I just used some screws and a backing board that it allows me to attach right into those existing holes. Now, that way I can add a French cleat to the back of this. Now whenever you have your fan up on your wall, the up and down motion, the torque, the face, that exactly where you want it, puts a lot of torque on your French cleat. Let me show you what I did to help prevent damage. Now here's the main French cleat, and if you look down here, this is a little bumper board that I've attached to the backing. This right here goes in between the cleats that are on the wall, and that'll allow it, as torque tries to pull this, this little bumper board hits the wall and doesn't allow it to move. And whenever you want to take your fan off your wall, that little bumper board and the French cleat act like two big feet, making it nice and stable wherever you want it. Now just about every major tool brand out there has a big, bright light. Ooh, that's getting a little warm on my hand. Now these right here are great whether you're trying to look across a field or just look at some stuff at night. And these right here, unfortunately, are not the best to store away. You try and set them down, they can easily get knocked over because they're top heavy. So I wanted to come up with a cool little holder just for it. Now this simple little holder is just a one by six with some arms sticking out. These are some furring strips. Now on the end of each of these arms, I have a little craft stick that's sticking out that once you have the light in position here, you don't have to worry about it vibrating off. So if you get bumped or if there's an earthquake, you don't have to worry about your light falling. Now on the back of these, I did do a little extra security by adding a couple brad nails to each of these arms so that way if the glue ever starts to give, hopefully I'll see it bending and can grab it before it breaks. Now another option would be to possibly add a little shelf to the bottom of this and that would give a little extra security and bracing to the light. But I don't know exactly which battery I will have on this so I wanted to keep it open in case I have a larger battery it can still go on and off real easily. Now almost any shop can use a little step stool. This is a simple little version. I actually made this in a previous video. I'll put a link to that in the description if by chance you're interested. I've used one board to build this and it's real lightweight. You can move it easily with one hand. Now having a step stool can sometimes be a problem because you can easily trip over it if you don't see it. The great thing about this one is I built it to have a nice flat back on it. So of course I can add a French cleat and now this can hang up and on the wall out of the way and I don't have to worry about it. And I can easily take it down whenever I need it. So if by chance you're interested in a stool, this right here is a good one. Now if you know anything about French cleats, of course you know you can install them on your wall. But what if I told you there's a chance you could install them on your ceiling? That's right, all this unused space up here could be holding tools. But it's not just any French cleat, it actually requires three pieces of wood. Now with most French cleats, you only have one side that's holding, but in this case, we're actually going to have two. I have two here that are facing each other. Then I have a third board that actually has a 45 degree on each side, and that will allow these to slide together. Now the center cleat will be the one that attaches to the ceiling, and these two outer ones will be the one that attach to your tool holder. And gravity will actually keep the tension between the two so it doesn't move easily. Now you want your cleats to be a little bit snug. You don't want them overly tight or overly loose or it could cause issues. Now if by chance your ceiling is not perfectly flat, you could always add a little spacer block right here on your center board so that way your sideboards don't interfere with the ceiling. 
Now one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna use a setup like this is you don't wanna put any real heavy tools up there. For example, you put a 20 pound tool up there, if by chance that was to ever fall, that can really hurt you or something in your shop. So I keep it the lightweight, maybe a pound or less, maybe like fishing poles or any, maybe some extra PVC pipe or anything else you might have that you can put up there and it'll be up and out of the way. Now, if you enjoy these ideas, I have a playlist right over here with literally hundreds of ideas just for you.